So in this video, I'm going to be showing you five things in Premiere Pro that you should be using to maximize your editing efficiency. So we're going to dive straight into Premiere Pro and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we're starting off with something nice and simple. So you've got a timeline where you need to make loads of cuts. So you select your cut tool by hitting C. That one's free, don't mention it and you start making your cuts. Now this is fine if you've got a single layer, but what if you've got multiple layers? Some of which you want to cut and some of which you just want to leave. If you control C and make your cuts, it's just gonna cut through everything, unless you're a smart editor, which is what we are. Simply lock the tracks you don't wanna cut by selecting this lock icon. And now when you make your cuts, these layers have these little lines that indicate that they're locked and you can just snip away without the lock tracks being affected by your cuts. That's it. Number two, batch move. So you're ready in your timeline and you need to squeeze a clip in. You need to basically move everything to the right so you can squeeze your clip in. Now you can do what 99% of beginners in Premiere Pro do and select everything to the right, zoom out, zoom in, faff around, and then move the clips to the right that way. Or you can be a smart editor like us. So just press A and two little arrows will pop up. Now you can select the first clip and all the clips to the right will now be selected automatically. And now you can just move these clips out of the way to the right so you can slot your clip in. And if you hold shift and press A, then you can do exactly the same, but to the left. Which I think is pretty darn neat, right? Saves a lot of time and fafferage. I'm not sure if fafferage is a word, but I'm making it one. So if you are finding this useful so far, then please do hit the like button. It's what it's there for. Helps other people find this content that may find it useful. Be a team player so that other people can find this content. Right? Be nice. So this is a bit of a follow on from number two, the batch move. If you've got a clip that you want to squeeze into the timeline, but you don't want to move everything left or right, because we are smart editors, right? Yes, we are. So if you just try and drop the clip into the timeline, it will just overwrite the clip that you're dropping it on top of. But if you hold Command on a Mac or Control on a PC and then move and drop the clip where you want it to live, then all of his mates in the timeline will move out of the way and let him in. Nice and easy. Number four, Project Window Master. I know, rolls off the tongue this one, right? Please do leave a comment below if you have something snap here. I'd love to hear it. So let me set the scene. You've done a ton of jump cuts, which I do in my YouTube videos, and you want to color correct them all. There's a couple of ways that you're probably using to do this. You could just copy and paste the attributes from one clip to the other clips by using copy and paste and all that fafferage. You could do it again. Or you could also nest the clips in a sequence and then apply the color grade to the nested sequence so it does the same color grade for all the clips. And this was actually my preferred method until I discovered this one on YouTube of all places. So let's simplify it. Please simplify it again. Simplify. I have increased your time. I like it. Forget the timeline. That's for losers. We're smart editors here. We're going to use the project window instead. Yeah, that's right. We can use the project window. So we're going to find our clip in the project window. We're then going to open our effects tab. And for this example, we're going to find Lumetri Color from our drop down list. We're going to drag Lumetri Color onto our clip in our project window. We're then going to select the clip in our project window. We're going to click on the effects tab and we're going to color grade our clip. And like magic, if you look at your footage from the clip in the timeline, the color grade is being applied to all of those individual clips just by changing the parameters of the clip in the project window. And like magic, all your footage in the timeline now has the same color grade. Pretty neat, right? Yeah, pretty neat. You can add LUTs, effects, basically anything you do to your clips in the timeline, you can do via the project window and it will apply those settings to all the footage that relates to that clip. 
So before we get to the last tip, all of these Premiere Pro tips are designed to help you edit smarter and therefore faster. So my channel is very much designed to help beginner filmmakers and editors to improve their workflow and to work more efficiently, to free up more time so that we can all do the things that we love to do, which may be making more videos. So please do remember to hit that subscribe button and ding that bell for more tutorials like this and also gear reviews to give you the tools to help make your content without breaking the bank. So a couple of reasons to subscribe. So do that now before we get on to the next tip. Done it? Good. Tip number five. Number five, the kill switch. So the chances of a glitch-free version of Premiere Pro in mine or your lifetime are slim to none, I'd say. Pretty much. And now I've kind of come to terms with that. Premiere Pro is a great bit of software where it works. When it doesn't, it is a pain, but I think the positives outweigh the negatives most of the time. Therefore, the spinning wheel of death, as we like to call it, is just something that we need to learn to embrace. Think of it as a little friend that just comes to check in on your editing from time to time. Admittedly, a bit of an annoying and selfish one, but a friend nevertheless. So when you have said hi to your friend and you just want him to do one, how do you decide that it's time to end a friendship? When somebody's constantly hurting your feelings or constantly breaking plans, or you constantly walk away from them with that feeling like, I don't feel so great. You know, I don't know what happened there, but I, I don't feel good about this anymore. How do you get rid of him without crashing out of your session and losing the last half an hour of your life? Because remember the chances of autosave actually working and saving the bit that you want it to save are again, fairly slim. So here's what you need to do to be a smart editor like us. Now you do need to follow these steps to the letter, otherwise it's not gonna work. So you've got the spinning wheel of death, you don't wanna lose everything, but you do need to close down Premiere Pro so that you can save it, start again. So if you're on a Mac, you're gonna go to your activity monitor, and if you're on a PC, you're gonna go to your task manager. Now you need to find and make a note of the PID number. So once you've made a note of the PID number, on a Mac, you need to go to terminal and type these exact words and numbers. It needs to be done exactly as it's written and spoken here. So you need to type in kill, that can be lowercase, then hit space, forward slash, I'm not sure what it is in American, but you can see it on the screen, forward slash, S-E-G-V in capital letters, space again, forward slash again, and then type in the PID number. Then hit return or enter. On a PC, you're gonna to go to command prompt. And again, you're gonna type in these exact words and numbers. So you're gonna type in task kill in capitals. You're gonna hit space. I'm gonna call this right slash. I think this is forward slash, but you can see it on the screen. It's the diagonal slash to the right. PID in capitals, space, and then your PID number. And again, enter or return. So then it should get rid of the spinning ball of death and allow you to save your project so that you can then close the project, reopen it and carry on from where you left off. Now quick disclaimer, if this doesn't work, please don't come after me. It's not my fault. You can't sue me. I'm just trying to help. So there we have it. There's five things in Premiere Pro that you can easily add to your workflow now to enable you to start editing smarter and therefore faster freeing up more time to do other things, make more videos, go out and have some fun. Take that time, do whatever you want with it. Over a period of time, these minutes it's safe will turn into hours, turn into days. Small things that hopefully make a big difference. So I hope you have enjoyed this and found it useful. If you have, please do give it that thumbs up. It's always appreciated. I enjoy making these videos, but it's always nice to know that people enjoy them and find them useful. So hit the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you're not already, and ding the bell. If you've enjoyed this, let me know in the comments below and I will make a sequel to this with five more. And then five more. We can keep going, we can keep going. We can make sure we're the most efficient Premiere Pro editors in town. So please do let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more content 
like this. Anyway, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm not going to take up any more of your time so you can go off and do the things that you need to be doing. So that's it for this one. Hope you found it useful and I'll catch you in the next video.